How to teach a dog to target the ball, but not the rope, handle, or your hand. Tip one, make sure your hand doesn't become the sole focus of your dog's playing and mouthing, okay? We've got a great video on YouTube discussing how to best manage mouthing in young puppies. So that's the first tip, make sure your hand doesn't become the focus. Tip two, get yourself a toy that's quite long. So your hand and the handle is a long way away from your pup. Check out our beefy, beefy le uh, leather rags, okay? These are a great tool to teach your dog to actually play with the toy and not mess with your hand. You can even attach a lead to this and flick it around and get your dog to chase the leather part, the toy part, not the handle or your hand. Tip three, when you move your dog up to say something like a linen tug, okay, I would cut off the handles. So whether you get a single or double handled tug, cut off both handles so the dog doesn't have a choice to mess with this at all, okay, and start presenting this part to your dog. Okay, so the dog only learns to bite this part. I'd actually get two of them and I'd be throwing one, getting the dog to chase it, pick it up and bring the other one back. Tip four, four, which is kind of the same as tip three. If you're using a ball and you want to start developing your dog on a ball, untie the rope. So get the balls you would want to use on a rope, ultimately, okay? Untie them so you've got a couple of free balls. Start getting the dog to chase and focus on the ball. The dog needs to learn to bite this part. If you get the right sort of um, material and ball type for your dog, they're gonna become very addicted and very interested in grabbing hold of that material versus the handle. So just teach them early days that this feels really good because once they start biting into that, this is far less satisfying. That's very small and they can't get a nice grip on that. These balls, the dog can get their mouth all the way around. Um, and if you use a Durafoam or a nice quality silicon or rubber ball, the dog can really grip into it properly and they're gonna become an addict for that, okay? So this becomes far less interesting. Tip five, okay, if you're really worried about your hand getting cuts all over it, it's really gonna affect your ability to present the toy properly and it's gonna create problems and it will get your dog focusing on your hand more. So if you're in that boat, get yourself a glove. Get yourself a glove that has rubber that goes around both sides. You can get the gardening type glove. Um, this is a glove from the tool shop at Bunnings, um, which has a little bit more protection, okay? You'll still get little nips through this, but they'll be far less, okay? And it will give you a level of confidence in the work. All right. Tip six, when you start to present the ball to your dog with the rope on, you need to make sure that the dog really has only the chance to bite the ball. So you wanna grip up and hold up the string and present it to the dog. And it's really important when you present it, you're nice and still, okay? Get it away from your body a little bit and create a really clean, still target, okay? Do not be moving it around like this because once again, your dog's probably gonna start looking for the hand. Okay, tip seven. Now we wanna present the ball using the whole string length. Just to show you how I hold the ball. Um, this is, um, not saying this is the best way, but I'll lock it off on my pointer finger, okay, and grip it there, and then present like this. Now, if you're doing misses with your dog, okay, there's obviously gonna be movement in the ball, but just make sure when you're going to present, once again, the ball becomes quite still, the dog has a really clear access, and they can target that ball. So just stabilize the ball, before the dog comes in, okay? If you're moving it like this as the dog comes in, the dog's not gonna target very well. Tip eight, if you're working your dog on a double-handled tug, think about how you're gonna present that tug so the dog can have a really clear picture to bite, okay? So do not dangle it this way, okay? That's gonna create issues for you. That's gonna give the dog an opportunity, even if you're holding it like that. The dog might bite here, 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 or here. It's really important that you present it so it's parallel to the ground Okay, and the dog has a really clear picture once again. So your presentation will generally ensure that you get a nice clean bite on the target itself. To the side of your body, so the dog has somewhere to go. Okay, and give them a nice clean picture. That's a huge target, a nice clear target for the dog to smash and run through. All right, tip nine. Okay, if the dog happens to, you presented everything perfectly and the dog has grabbed the rope or sort of half rope, half toy, all you wanna do is hold the toy really still. So the dog is on the end of this and pulling, okay? You hold that toy really still, pull the dog. The dog should have a, a collar on it. Always have a collar on your dog. Okay, you pull the dog into the bite a little bit and your dog is probably gonna re-chomp. When they go to re-chomp, try and present the ball so they can grab it. So they're probably here, they're gonna mouth, open their mouth to re-grip. When they re-grip, put them on and then immediately back into the tug game, okay? So dog comes in, they miss, okay? You slow it down, you just hold it stable on your chest so the dog's in front of you here. 
pull the dog into you a little bit. They're gonna regroup as soon as they hit that ball, bang. Okay, the game starts again. All right, tip 10, okay? The game always goes dead if the dog is biting on anything that you don't want. So just like tip nine, okay, but the game goes dead. So even if the dog grabs this here and runs away, essentially the game just shuts down for a second. You can get your other toy out and ready. When the dog spits this one out, try and present it so they get back on here. If you're in the middle of a tug and the dog grabs that rope, everything shuts down and goes dead. If the dog's got a collar, you can pull them in, stabilize them, keep them still, okay, until they're back in the game. All right, have fun with it. You can get yourself some more protective gear if you need, okay? You can chuck a bomber jacket on if your dog's just a savage and just bites everywhere. Okay, you can get welding gloves um, from Bunnings which come up to here, okay? So if you need more protection, um, you can get a much bigger glove, yeah? I don't like really wearing gloves that much unless the dog is really, really crazy erratic. But once the dog learns the game, and they really learn to sink their teeth into a really, really good quality toy, avoid cheaper toys or toys where the dog can slip off easily, okay, um, you'll find that they're gonna to start to target extremely well.